What's up guys, Sean here in the Big Brown Guy channel. I'll just do a new series where we just kind of cruise around with the Big Brown Guy. And let's check out GP Knives. I like this side. I like the layout. They seem to uh, be a little bit more low-key than Blade HQ. I, I like Blade HQ too, but man, it's like a rat race to uh, get certain stuff. It'll come in and then it's gone, just like that. So GP Knives has got a nice layout. Uh, it's got good customer service and yeah. So whenever I go to these sites and this is what you should probably do too if you're really into knives or what you're already doing this is nothing new for you is you go to the new section and you see what's coming out maybe if there's any kind of limited knives or whatnot so yeah let's check it out and see what we have here let's see here we got some striders uh this looks kind of cool i saw somebody review one of these a sheepdog yeah let's check it out here we go <laughs> new nav this is by the Kaiser Company. They're the uh, high-end Chinese cutlery, which is kind of like an oxymoron, right? But, man, just a sign that the times are changing, man. Times are changing. And this is nothing I would necessarily carry, but, you know, there's kind of a new renaissance in folding knives that, you know, like the days of just carrying what's super functional and efficient is kind of like moving by the wayside, and you got these uh, designer knives. That's kind of what they're called now. So we hear here. S35VN. Look at that big chunk of it, too. That pocket clip looks pretty pretty rad. It's a choppa. It's like something that uh, Arnold would carry or something in Commando. <laughs> it's pretty dope, though. I don't know. I, I think it's kind of cool looking. I mean, yeah, heavy as sin. Uh, made in China. Titanium. American Steel. We got the 35VN. Yeah, very cool, man. Not something I'm going to buy, but eh. Just check it out. Uh, we got Rick Hinderers. They're, they're okay. They're, they're kind of chunky, man. Almar. Eh. Oh, here we go. Got some ZTs, man. These are different, too. These are the new 2016 models. They have the... Uh, he's got the Micarta, man. I love Micarta. If you've never felt Micarta, man, it's like super grippy. It gets like really grippy when it's wet and stuff. It's pretty stylish, man. You know, I wasn't too big of a fan of this knife. I watched uh, watched a video on it, though. It looked pretty dope. It's pretty beefy. Beefy looking guy. S35VN. KVT bearing flipper. Again, super heavy. Yeah, that's hot, man. I like that. I like it. Yeah, zero tolerance, man. They're just killing the flipper market. They've got that. They've got the best flippers, I think, for sure. For the money, you can't beat a uh, zero tolerance flipper. And we got some Emerson designs. God, isn't that brutal when like the company that makes an Emerson style knife makes it better than uh, the actual Emerson? And they're more affordable too. And they've got better steel. I mean, look at this. This is a. Uh, Emerson right here. This also has the uh, really cool micarta scales, but what's the steel on this one? 154 cm. It's not even CPM 154, which is the powdered metal version. Uh, you know, 154 cm is good stuff, man. It's like VG10. And I know, okay, I know steel is not everything. I know it's not everything, but still, I mean, 219, weighing for 199, eh, I'd probably go with this one right here. Look at that. It's attractive. If I was in the Emerson Nas, I'm, I'm really not. I'm not too into them. Oh, this one's Hellmax. Woo! Even more of an upgrade. Double the upgrade. <laughs> uh, let's move along, move along. Page two. I permanently go about three or four pages in. Yeah, we got more Emersons. New Boker. Looks like some sort of, like, uh, Endura clone. Let's just check it out. It's a steel on there. 154 cm. Okay. Let me get a zoom in on that. Eh. You know, I don't like that border at the top. It definitely reminds me of, like, the bird line. And then the, uh, man, the grip texture on that. That's pretty goofy. That looks like the, uh, the cold steel stuff. You just can't top that bi-directional, uh, texturing that, uh, Spyderco has. Those troils look pretty uncomfortable, too. You, you do have that finger troil right there. That's pretty cool. The plunge grind looks good. Jipping on there. Thumb stud. Blade shape's not bad. Looks like a slight hollow grind going on there. Not a bad knife, but you know what? It's... How much is it? 
Yeah, same price, basically, as an Endura. I'd rather just buy an Endura. Yeah, the pocket clip. I mean, it's deep carry. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I'd rather just get an Endura, man. Nice try, Boker. <laughs> nice try. We've got the martini stuff. They're not bad. Let's check it out. Looks kind of cool, though, huh? Too bad their handles are lacquered, and you know what? I'm kind of a I'm kind of a puko snob, man. This doesn't have a backstitch sheath yet. Everything else looks pretty solid. And then we got the uh, the finger notch right there. You know, I think if they wanted to be more successful with these line of knives, they should get rid of that finger groove. They should get rid of the lacquer that they put on these handles, and they should make that a backstitch sheath. And I'd be I'd be all over that, man. Especially for 25 bucks. What? Yeah, that'd be awesome. But yeah, just a few things there. They're kind of really trying to, and when, when you when they do stuff like that, they're trying to cater to more of a like a Western audience that are like, oh, this knife doesn't have a guard, and oh, like I'd cut the uh, I'd cut the sheath if it didn't have a welt, doesn't have a welt. But you know what, man, I I like the more of the uh, the Finnish tradition. These are actually made in Finland too, so that's kind of cool. Chris Reeve knives, nice, man, really top notch engineering. I, you know, I held a Chris Reeve at the store, man. It, it didn't, it didn't flick out super fast. It was uh, smooth, almost hydraulic, but it was kind of slow. It, it definitely seemed like it needed a good break in. I, you know, I'm not a fan of these uh, graphics that he does on here. They just look uh, a little too gaudy. A little too gaudy for me. I think it'd be sweet if he did uh, like some knurling on the handles right here. You know, instead of these uh, silly graphics on there, like kind of like some checkering, that'd be freaking awesome. I'd like that a lot. Becker neck knife. No, oh, look at that. We totally need some uh, mammoth tooth. <laughs> That's definitely what I was looking for. Oh man, you know, I was looking at this. I was really surprised that K Bar was making something like this because it actually uh, looks a little more higher end for a low price. This is definitely 2016 is a year of uh, collaborations, man. And I'm stoked that uh, big companies are realizing that, hey, you know, maybe we're not the best at designing knives and maybe we can kind of farm that out to people that are having some like really interesting designs. So you can get like mid tech style knives for, yeah, like under 50 bucks, which is impressive. I mean, it does, one thing that it does piss me off about this knife is everything looked really good. I watched Tyler uh, opening and closing it on the, on the video here. That pivot doesn't have a, a Torx head. So it looks like what you would have to do is you'd have to take a, uh, like a pair of tweezers or whatnot and stick it in there uh, on each side and you'd be able to screw and unscrew it. But yeah, being able to adjust the pivot is definitely, uh, it's a huge deal, man. It's a huge deal. It's a sign of a quality knife because over time, you know, you may need to take it apart, you may need to adjust or uh, loosen or tighten the pivot as time goes on. You know, you just definitely need that option, especially if you're really into knives. But yeah, definitely a good knife for like a, uh, uh, some dude getting into knives. We'll have to do a budget series, man. I'll have to show you guys all my uh, favorite low-end knives because uh, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, we got Oz 8A. <laughs> the A signifies that the Oz 8 steel has been heat treated. <laughs> the A means it comes annealed. That's what the A stands for is annealed, which means it's soft. So like Oz 8A and Oz 8, there's no difference. People, people make a distinction between that, but... Nah. That's good. It's good stuff. Got some more hinders. Yeah, just not interested. Skipping the four, man. Ooh. CT. This is definitely like the smoothest flipping knife I've ever experienced. And ZDP what he'd be dying. I would be on that like a beast if it wasn't for the fact that. ZT, you screwed up that plunge so bad. Uh, that area right there where that uh, choil starts and the flipper, yeah, it's actually not fully ground all the way to the heel of the edge right there where you could sharpen. It gets thicker right there, so it's a complete pain in my neck to sharpen. But, yeah, otherwise, it's a good knife. It's also a little too uh, too small for my hand, but, you know, for, for light gentleman carry, <laughs> it shouldn't be an issue. The blue standoffs, I mean, they totally look cool, but I got that 940-1 that has blue standoffs. You know, I'd, I'd like it if they maybe did a different color, maybe like yellow or something. That's something we haven't seen. 
gold. Yeah, gold. Cool. Yeah, pretty expensive too, 240. I realize it's pretty exclusive though. ZDP 189. Man, Kai, you need to start making more knives with these exotic Japanese steels like Spiderco. That'd be awesome. See a slip joint. Another Sabinza for left hand. <laughs> Victorinox climber. <laughs> What's that? That's like the fanciest Victorinox I've seen. What's up with the handle there, huh? That's interesting. Is there anything special about it besides the... Oh, it's for the Olympic Games. Only 2,500 pieces worldwide. <laughs> Swiss steel. <laughs> what, what is Swiss steel? No, Victorinox knives are pretty. That was like my first knife as a kid growing up. You know, I begged my parents for a locking folding knife, and they just didn't happen. That's why I'm so crazy now. It's an interesting looking. Let's look at that real quick. Yeah, it almost looks thick enough to actually do some woodwork. If you guys don't know anything about like axes and tomahawks and hatchets, a tomahawk is designed as like a fighting tool first, a woodworking tool second. And so tomahawks are known for being really thin versus a hatchet. It's a little bit thicker. Hatchet's going to work better for woodworking. Tomahawk's going to work better for fighting. Uh, you can, like, do a roll reversal, but the hatchet's going to be too heavy to uh, wield super fast. And uh, tomahawk's going to be too light for woodworking. It's just not going to split the wood up and, and chop as good. 420J. Ah. Uh, I don't know, man. I think I'd prefer the uh, the SOG Fast Hawk or SOG Tomahawk. I think those are just cooler. Same steel, though. Cool. We'll just make this a short video. We'll have to make more of these in the future. These are pretty fun. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care.